Hey, it's Woodside here again. I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, it's got a new video here. Using a different type of wood called Tree of Heaven, which is a uh, indigenous to China mainland, but it's been brought over to the United States back in the day somehow. Now it's a uh, considered invasive in some places. Yeah, this chunk of wood's about maybe three inches uh, diameter and uh, recently came down. I think it's dry enough, but um, I just went ahead and started carving on it using these uh, miniature saw blades. On like, they look like miniature circular saws, and they really uh, cut through the wood pretty easy. Some new thing I'm trying now, instead of uh, starting off with the uh, burrs I'm going to use these little circular saws and see how they work out so far um, it seems to cut through the wood quite easy I don't know I'll have to test it out on a harder wood like oak or something like that but um, anyway yeah I picked these up at Menards it's like a Home Depot store and it's pretty cheap they weren't too expensive I think it costs around around 10 bucks for a pack of sorted different blades containing about four or five blades I think yes woods a bit on the softer side and you, know, you gotta be a bit cautious when you're using power carving tools on this because it can just go right through it like nothing so so it tends to be a uh, different than the pine knots that I normally use which seems a uh, more forgiving this one you got to watch yourself more or less and uh, there's bits of uh, I think uh, the rings in the tree have different densities and it's so uh, when you're cut through it you might hit a soft spot in between the rings or something like that I don't know what but anyway it's not very uniform as far as a uh, carving goes, so this one's gonna have be more uh, s scratchy looking or something like that with a lot of lines, which I decided to do because it's harder to control this kind of wood for some reason. It's just not like your normal pine wood. Yeah, I'm using the Stylo Plus again from the Dremel. And it's uh, really not a bad tool. And I think it's very uh, lightweight and handy for details. Uh, as I mentioned before in previous videos, but I won't go back into that in depth. Don't want to beat a dead horse, but anyway, yeah, it's just a... Uh, not a bad tool for the price, I'd say, but yeah, we'll we'll keep it at that. But um, I still use the scribes and stuff here and there for lines and stuff. And uh, steel wool works on this okay, smooths things out, but it's totally different from uh, pine knots. Pine knots it gives it a more of a shine too, based on the resin density of the pine knots compared to this is just a tree branch so it's pretty much dry and it has some kind of polishing qualities but it's not anything significant
I got a saber tooth uh, burrs really cut through this like like no one's business and uh, you get a lot of work done quickly with this type of wood but I don't know if I'm gonna ever go back to it I might I don't know I'll just keep a journal record or something of it you know it makes with small notes yeah the main focus of this video is basically trying different types of woods instead of using the same same style of wood you're used to it causes different effects obviously and then you learn from trial and error I guess and I guess uh, this one's okay wood but I think it needs to be treated with some kind of oil or varnish afterwards I think I'm focusing on the beard area like I was talking about earlier. It's got a little mustache as well, but I'm just basically focusing on the beard area. Make it look as natural as possible, you know, not something that looks cheesy or anything like that, you know. Just trying to give some randomness to the shapes and waviness to the beard and stuff like that. Instead of like straight lines, which is uh, obviously not natural, so not to be kind of sunny or anything like that, but I'll just throw a few curves in there. Pretend like the wind's blowing his hair, stuff like that. You can go that way too. Yeah, when I'm lighting the subject with a single light source, it creates a strong shadow effect. I mean, if I had multiple lights all over the place, it would be less uh, less shadows, but um, it comes in handy when you're, like, shaping the wood with your tools and stuff so you can see how it looks. And it gives you an idea of what needs to be done as well. Well, that's it for this uh, video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, take care. Bye.